Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nick Larigakis. I'm president of the American Hellenic Institute here in Washington, D.C., of which where we are broadcasting here live this afternoon, this uh, second edition, uh, next edition, rather, of our American Hellenic Institute Virtual Speakers Forum. And we come from, to you live from our AHI headquarters on 16th Street here called Hellenic House. Ladies and gentlemen, before we begin our forum today, as many of you may already know, this has been a very difficult week for the American Hellenic Institute family. And I would venture to say for Hellenism the world over. For this week on Saturday past, we lost our pillar, our heart, our soul, our founder, the man who kept this organization, who started this organization and who kept it going with his vitality, his intelligence, his integrity, for so many years. I speak of Eugene Rosides, who passed away at the age of 92 on Saturday. Gene Rosides championed an inspired generation and more <clears throat> to advocate for the rule of law, for Hellenism and justice for Cyprus. He provided a lifetime of service and dedication to America, Greece and Cyprus, and Hellenic ideas. The Greek American community and Hellenic diaspora are in a far better place today because of the life of Gene Rosides. Gene, in addition to being remembered for his tremendous contributions to law, law enforcement, legal scholarship, and his prowess that were unmatched at the time on the gridiron on the field of Columbia University's football field, also had a great career in government service, serving two presidents. He understood the United States foreign policy must be grounded on ethical principles and not only on national power. The American Hellenic Institute remains committed to the ideas of Gene Rosides and pledges to continue promoting his ideas and foreign policy values. On a personal level, I always consider Gene Rosides like a second father. He gave me an opportunity when no one else did to be part of a greater goal, a greater agenda. And he let me, he allowed me to fail on my own, to succeed on my own, but always there to support me and to encourage me in the work of the American Hellenic Institute. I'll always be indebted for him for allowing me and providing me with the opportunity to be able to be where I stand here today. I remember him as a man of virtue, integrity, a genuine man a giant amongst men. Gene Rosides did what he did out of true conviction and principle. And in so doing, he advocated and fought for the issues for all the right reasons. I will miss him dearly and can only make him the promise that I will continue to carry out his work to the best of my ability. The American Atlantic Institute Board of Directors, the American Atlantic Institute Foundation Board of Directors, express our profound sorrow and deepest sympathies and condolences to the wife of Gene Rosides, Aphrodite, his children, Gail, Michael, Alexander, and Eleni, and of course, their grandchildren and the entire Rosides family. Mr. Rosides, may your memory be eternal and you will always be loved by me. May I offer a moment of silence, please, in the memory of Gene Rosides and of which we dedicate today's broadcast. Thank you. Our subject matter today, I believe is very apropos in, because of Gene Rossi's passion was always to advocate and to bring to the forefront what Greece's role has been in contemporary Western civilization of the 20 and 21st century. And he paid a high premium on Greece's contributions of World War II. Therefore, this organization over the years has done as much as we can to bring to the forefront and to make more aware what those contributions have been of Greece in the fight of World War II and its, and its eventual outcome for victory Western principles of democracy. It's a story that unfortunately is not told enough in Western history books, in Western scholarly journals, 
or in classrooms and in universities across the country. And certainly not Hollywood either. There are at least three movies that I can be, that I know of that were made on Dunkirk, but how many Hollywood productions have been made on the Battle of Crete? How many have been made on Oshi Day and the exceptional resistance fighting and how Greece stood against the mighty Nazis and its Axis powers of World War II? We don't forget that here at the Institute and we try to shine a light on it to the best of our abilities. So today we honor the 79 year commemoration of the Battle of Crete that took place on May 20th of 1941. But a few numbers before I begin. The Axis swept through the continent of Europe as we know, but do we know the numbers? Poland in 36 days, the Netherlands in four days, Belgium in 18, France in 43, Yugoslavia in 11, and Greece from the famous Ochi of October 28, 1940 to the fall of June 1, 1941 of the island of Crete, 178 days. That is over five months, ladies and gentlemen. It's a story that needs to continue to be remembered and acknowledged. Metaxas had a tremendous quote when he said regarding what Greece was gonna be up against. He said, Greece is not fighting for victory. She is fighting for glory and for honor. She has a debt to herself to remain worthy of her history. There are times in which a nation, if it wishes to remain great, gains by being able to fight, even if it has no hope for victory. Greece did that and much more. To bring light to the subject matter at hand and Greece's contributions to World War II overall, we have two distinguished uh, guest uh, panelists today, and they are Colonel Vasilios Lambropoulos, who is the defense attache here at the embassy in Greece in Washington, uh, Colonel Ambrobulus has been here now for uh, approximately a year and a half. His full bio is uh, on, our, on our website. But uh, very briefly, he uh, graduated from the Hellenic Military Academy in 1992. He has served in various military capacities for the Hellenic Armed Forces, has been decorated, and he's with us here today. Uh, also from uh, Florida, in, in his home, relaxing, as you can see, he's not wearing his tie. Good for you, Manny. I only wear these ties and jackets now every time we do one of these Zooms. <laughs> uh, Emmanuel, or Manny as he likes to be known to his friends, Velivasakis, uh, was born in Heraklion in Crete, came to the United States for his, uh, for, his, uh, you know, for his studies, has been here ever since. Of course, he does go back and forth to Greece like many of us do. He's a renowned uh, uh, architect. He has worked on some of the most important buildings of the world. Uh, none more so than the emergency response at the World Trade Center disaster of 9-11 in 2001. Manny has served as president of the Pan-Cretan Association of America, the World Council of Cretans, and the Hellenic American National Councils. He also has been awarded distinctions, not only by the Greek American community, but also from the professional architectural community as well. Uh, before we turn it over to the audience, we are eager to get your questions, but I do ask you to please try to keep them as simple as you possibly can, and you have more of an opportunity for us to be able to uh, get your question uh, asked if you keep it to a, a very short question. So with that, the Zoom floor is yours, Colonel Vasilios Labropoulos. Uh, thank you, uh, Nick. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Nick, Mr. Velipasakis, and of course, to the distinguished uh, audience. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Aki and you personally, Nick, for the invitation to be with you today. Uh, it is an honor for me uh, to speak uh, for the Battle of Crete as we celebrate the 79th anniversary. Uh, it is magnif with magnificence and respect that uh, we honor uh, this uh, milestone uh, for the World War II and Greece uh, history and uh, we pay uh, tribute to the heroes who have fallen uh, on the battle. 
Uh, but uh, Nick, uh, before I speak uh, for the Battle of uh, Crete, uh, please allow me to start uh, with uh, something uh, else. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to uh, convey my condolences to Jean Rossidi's uh, family. Uh, it is uh, uh, a great uh, loss for the Greek-American uh, community. Uh, may his uh, memory be eternal. Uh, second, uh, yesterday, uh, May 19, uh, marks the remembrance of the Podium Greek genocide. Uh, one of the darkest uh, moments uh, in the Greek uh, history. Uh, records uh, show uh, a minimum of 350,000 uh, Podium Greeks uh, exterminated uh, by Turkish uh, troops and Kurdish uh, paramilitary. And uh, now um, I have uh, my introductory uh, statement uh, for the Battle of uh, Crete. Uh, and uh, I will try to describe uh, in brief uh, the operational first uh, framework. Uh, the Battle of Crete was fought from uh, May 20th uh, to June 1st, 1941. Uh, Crete uh, became uh, a German objective following its rapid occupation of the Greek uh, uh, mainland uh, in April 1941. Uh, during the last uh, week of uh, April, more than 50,000 uh, Allied troops uh, were evacuated from the mainland. The Greek government fled uh, to Crete, uh, the last bastion uh, of uh, Greek uh, freedom. Uh, the capital of Crete, Hagna, uh, became the capital of Free Greece. Uh, some uh, 19,000 uh, British Commonwealth uh, troops, uh, British, uh, Australians, uh, New Zealanders, uh, were hardly uh, evacuated from uh, mainland Greece to Crete, uh, leaving uh, much of their uh, armament uh, behind. Uh, they were joining uh, the small Commonwealth uh, uh, force, uh, which already there, uh, and the Cretan uh, army unit, which uh, have been previously uh, stripped uh, of much uh, human resources uh, and armament. Uh, Germans, uh, for uh, an attack on Crete, uh, had been uh, taken uh, safe uh, since uh, uh, early April. Uh, given the strength of the uh, Royal uh, Navy, uh, this revolt around uh, an assault uh, from the air rather than an amphibious uh, landing. Uh, Hitler was uh, at once excited by uh, and uh, skeptical uh, of such uh, innovation. A uh, general uh, uh, Kurt uh, student, a passionate believer uh, in the strategic uh, use of uh, paratroops and gliders, uh, overcome uh, fears, uh, doubts, uh, on the understanding that uh, uh, preparation for the uh, Operation Barbarossa, the invasion of, of the Soviet uh, Union, uh, would be uh, compromised uh, and that as insurance uh, against uh, a disaster, uh, the air offensive uh, would be reinforced and provisioned by sea. Thus, Operation Mercury, uh, Epihirisi Hermes, uh, swung into action. Uh, in Crete, the, common, the British uh, Commonwealth uh, troops and uh, Cretans uh, were uh, practically uh, trying to establish uh, viable defenses on the island. Uh, while being uh, continuously bombed uh, by the Germans, who enjoy uh, a total uh, air uh, superiority. Uh, New Zealand uh, Major General uh, Bernard Freiberg has just taken uh, command of the Commonwealth uh, forces on the island, which uh, Winston Churchill uh, had ordered to be defended at all costs. By the end of April, uh, there were more than uh, 43,000 uh, British Commonwealth and uh, Greek soldiers on the island. But uh, geography uh, made uh, the job of uh, defending uh, Crete uh, very tough. Uh, the key points on the island uh, were uh, the airfield of uh, Maleme, uh, Retino, uh, and Heraklion, and of course the port at Suda Bay. All were located on the northern coast. The loss of any of these areas would make uh, the defense of the uh, island 
virtually impossible, uh, given the Germans' uh, ability to uh, quickly uh, deliver men and supplies from our bases uh, on the mainland. Uh, yet the Allies uh, were uh, are willing uh, to destroy uh, all these uh, uh, installations, uh, especially the uh, port of uh, Suda Bay was essential uh, to their supply. Uh, and uh, it was uh, still uh, hoped that the Royal uh, Air Force uh, could operate from the island uh, in the future. The Operation Mercury uh, Invasion uh, Plan uh, called uh, for a major uh, general court uh, students 11 Air uh, Corps uh, to land paratroopers and uh, glider uh, troops at crucial uh, point uh, along Crete, uh, 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 northern uh, uh, shore, uh, to be followed uh, by the 5th Mountain Division, uh, which would be uh, airlifted uh, into the captured uh, airfield. Uh, students' uh, uh, attack force uh, planned to land uh, the bulk of its men uh, near Maleme in the west, uh, with uh, smaller formations uh, dropping near Retinon and Iraklio to the east. The focus uh, on Maleme was the result of its uh, large airfield uh, and uh, that the assault uh, force uh, could be covered by the air, uh, by the air force uh, flying uh, from the Greek uh, mainland. The elite of uh, German uh, uh, army, the paratroop uh, division, was known as uh, Hermann Goering uh, division, lead the assault, uh, which began shortly after the dawn uh, on May uh, 20, uh, 1941. Uh, first, uh, with the renewed uh, bombing, uh, then followed uh, by the airborne assault. Uh, the Nazi uh, assault uh, had three points of attack. The Western uh, attack group, Pomet, which uh, targeted uh, Maleme, Strip uh, and Kisamos uh, areas, uh, the central uh, attack group, ARIS, which uh, focused uh, Hanya, Alikianos, Suda, and the east uh, to Retinon, uh, and the eastern attack uh, group, Orion, which uh, targeted the Iraqian uh, area. Initially, uh, the battle was turning in favor of the British. The Germans uh, had made uh, several critical uh, mistakes. Uh, first, uh, by underestimating the strength, uh, the strength of the British and Greek uh, forces. And second, uh, most of the uh, German units missed their uh, primary objectives and often fall on the top of the uh, British uh, defenders. As a result, uh, the paratroopers suffered devastating uh, losses. However, uh, a few uh, units managed to, to survive and uh, began consolidating uh, their position at the edge of uh, Maleme uh, Erfield. On the other parts of uh, Crete, the fighting was uh, equally uh, hard, particularly in the interior of the uh, island. Uh, in the many instances, uh, the Germans, uh, as much as the British, were surprised uh, and often uh, perplexed uh, by the ferocity uh, that the Cretans, uh, both uh, uh, men and women, uh, displayed against the invaders. Uh, in any event, the bravery of uh, the Cretans, uh, New Zealanders, uh, Australians, British, uh, could not uh, compensate for uh, ineffectual uh, leadership and the determination of uh, general students uh, Student, uh, to overcome also almost uh, impossible uh, obstacles to sustain, sustain uh, the attack. Despite uh, uh, a casualty rate of uh, nearly 90%, uh, the handful of, of uh, German uh, troops uh, near Maleme gained control uh, of the airfield, which uh, enabled Luftwaffe uh, pilots uh, to land successfully uh, with uh, reinforcements. Uh, Prior uh, ordered uh, counter attacks to recapture uh, the vital uh, airport and especially uh, the Hill uh, 107, but uh, these uh, were uh, 
uncoordinated and uh, ultimately uh, failed. The loss of uh, Malemme uh, made the position of the Greek uh, defenders uh, untenable. In the matter of days, uh, the paratroopers were supplemented uh, by fresh uh, battalions of the 5th uh, uh, Mountain Division, which uh, pushed uh, also the British uh, Commonwealth forces from the other two airfields uh, at Rethnon and Iraklion, and uh, thus uh, sealing uh, the fate of the island. Uh, London instructed uh, Freiburg uh, to evacuate uh, the island uh, on the uh, 27th of uh, May, uh, ordering uh, troops uh, move uh, towards to the southern uh, ports. He directed other units to hold open uh, key, uh, key roads uh, south uh, and uh, prevent uh, the Germans from uh, interfering. Uh, once again, the Royal uh, Navy had to uh, execute an evacuation uh, and uh, suffer uh, the losses of the uh, irreplaceable uh, ship uh, sunk by German uh, warplanes. After the evacuation of the Commonwealth uh, forces uh, from uh, Spakia uh, on the south coast of uh, Crete, uh, from uh, 27th uh, May to 1st uh, June uh, 1941, the Battle of Crete was officially uh, ended. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I am sorry for the difficulties here. Uh, I'm also pleased to participate in this Zoom panel. Thank you, Nick Larigakis, for the opportunity. Uh, I, too, would like to express my sincere condolences for the passing of Eugene Rosilis. He was truly a good American and an exceptional Hellene who devoted his life in promoting Hellenic and Cypriot interests and causes here in the U.S. Although I'm a structural engineer by training, history has always been, uh, always captivated me since I was a young man, and particularly the history of the Battle of Crete, especially since my both my parents were there at the time and uh, they recounted the events on multiple occasions from their point of view, of course, and from what they saw. There is a Cretan song, popular song, that goes, Apushi armata skrata, kapudeneke avrit. Who he's got guns, let him use them, and who he hasn't, let him find some, so that all together, we can fight the enemy for freedom and dignity. This popular song, yet again, proved correct in the battle to conquer Crete, where the heroic inhabitants of the island were not deterred by the fact that they had no modern weapons, but then they faced the German elite war machine. And once again, the Cretans relied on their own instincts for freedom and rose up to the occupation and used whatever weapons they had and whatever they found to fight the enemy. Today, 79 years after the battle and after many publications and archives, both sides, from both sides, historians can certainly uh, assess objectively and evaluate the wider meaning of Greece's participation of the Second World War. And I am sure that uh, the strategic and the military side of the battle was ably dealt with by Colonel Vasilis Lambropoulos. I would like to distinguish just for a moment the participants. The German war machine with absolute superiority, as the good Colonel mentioned before, and on the other side, the British, the New Zealanders, the Australians. And along with them, the main protagonist, may I dare to say, of the Battle of Crete, the people of Crete. And I would like to mention, in addition, the many Cypriots that took part in the Battle of Crete, 
as they were enlisted in the British military unit. And I would like to pay tribute to one of the last participants of the Battle of Crete, a good Cretan that passed away about a month ago, George Dipikas. He was 102 years old and he participated in the Battle of Crete and the subsequent resistance. May his memory be eternal. All the Cretans wish to fight, and I like General Ted after enduring the invasion. Indeed, the Cretans and the Celtic protection they had towards the King uh, towards King George, who we have moved the headquarters in Crete, and despite the pride of their youth, Cretan youth had formed the Cretan division in Ipirus, and they were fighting in Albania, and they had not made it back to the island during the Battle of Crete. The Cretans asked the military authorities for guns, but they got none. The military dictatorship of Metaxas had collected all the guns from Cretans because he was afraid of them. There's a characteristic uh, passage from an novel called the Cretan Nakia, and a villager named Manolas recalls a conversation he had with his elderly mother. We were told by the captain to hand over our guns because the country needed them. And those who had mules should give them too, also because they need them in the Albanian front. I had a short Malikeri, Malinger, 1903 gun from the wars of the Baltics. I kept it like a doll. I kissed it, ready to turn it in. And my old lady said, son, don't give it away because you never know how things will turn out. And you I see. Can you hear him? Yes. Uh, not now. Not now. We. We've got a problem here again. We lost you there for a second. Germans invaded the island. We uh, went to the village and took our hunting guns and the axes and the thick walking sticks and ran down to the valley where the Germans were falling from the sky. My old lady was walking behind me, carrying a small bag with munition. You were right, I told her. I shouldn't have given away my gun to the police. Hurry up and get moving, she replied, and stop talking. The truth was that the whole Cretan population wanted to fight. A similar picture was given by a Brigadier General uh, from the New Zealander. It was an amazing sight seeing villagers of all ages begging for guns. The morale of the Cretans is impossible to describe. And in the cities, the people were asking the authorities for guns. And the guns, as I said, had been collected. The masses were so upset that in Hania and Irakio broke into the stacks of guns and munitions, and they took them, and they participated in the battle. Another passage from Nikos Kazantzakis' book, Crete, My Island, memorializes the characteristic conversation he had with the villagers some years later. Immediately, we saw the planes. We shouted, let's get them. We grabbed our guns and went. What guns? Cousin Sanchez asked. You had guns? You bet we did. Some hold rifles. Others had knives. And others had walking sticks. When the skyman would fall, he would be still busy and would immediately attack him, kill him with sticks and knives. We take all his equipment and slowly get our hands full of the machine guns and revolvers. The resistance of the, German, of the German 
of the Cretan population caught the Germans by surprise. We grossly underestimated the opponent, one German general said before. And even the Cretan priests took part in the battle. There was a priest from Paleochoras, Ilianos Randeskakis, who took his parishioners of Candanos with the guns raised in hand, and he went down to the valley to fight. In Rethymno, an Australian Major General Standover remembers a monk armed with an old gun and an axe. Well, the following day, the same monk showed up armed in the battlefield, accompanied by a young boy who was carrying his trophies. And from those trophies, he distinguished a German machine gun. It was really great for the first time that Germans encountered resistance from a local population. In the first six days of the battle, 200 Cretans were executed, and many, many more were executed in the following months. No one knows exactly the tally of the executed partisans and civilians, but it is estimated in the thousands. I know from my own village, probably 70% of the men were died either in the battle or afterwards were executed. The free-minded people after the occupation, the free-minded Christian people did not stop there. They did not give up. They, they started the resistance, which was centered with the Lefkaori and Siloritis. That was the nucleus of the resistance. The attitude of the Cretan people dignifies and seals the fight for freedom, inalienable right of people to self determination. People of Crete once again became great protagonists of history. Ultimately, the Germans paid a huge price for their success. Unpredictable losses 4,500 dead, 350 planes lost. The days of the airborne paratrooper were over, stated Hitler, congratulating German student for his victory. But it was a bittersweet victory. The lesson of the Battle of Crete and the resistance remains always relevant. It teaches us that nothing in life is earned without unshakable beliefs, struggle, sacrifice. And there are certain values for which, if necessary, one must sacrifice even his own life. I will close with a Cretan resitico. <laughs> Hitler, do not brag for setting foot on Crete. You found her unarmed while her children were away. They were away fighting in Albania, yet they were still fighting for freedom. And I will close with a mandinada. Banda maresi na perno is that translatable in English in a short way? I always like to walk the paths of Siloritis, for they have been first walked on by the partisans of the occupation. Thank you. Well, thank you to both uh, panelists. Uh, I'm sorry for the technical difficulty. I, I hope via the use of my, f my phone and Manny's phone, we are able the audience is able to uh, to hear what's going on. Uh, we will now turn it to some questions. And let me start with, obviously, you know, we, we learn from history uh, books that Hitler and his generals did not really want to invade Greece uh, when they did, but were sort of, their hand were forced because of Mussolini's uh, escapades uh, of uh, coming into Greece in, in October of 1940, or his attempt, let's say. Uh, and therefore, the Germans uh, felt they the need to come and protect uh, Mussolini. But the, the Germans had ultimately captured mainland Greece uh, through April of, of 41. Why then did they feel compelled that they needed to go and attack Crete? What was the importance of going strategically, military strategically for the, uh, for the Germans to, to also go and capture Crete? May I make a... No, that's your answer question for you, mostly. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, first of all, 
the strategic value of the island has been uh, apparent uh, both uh, British uh, and Turkish uh, military planners uh, since the year before. Uh, as an air base, Crete, uh, it could be used uh, by the British to probe of the Balkans uh, and to threaten uh, Romanian oil fields at Floesti, uh, and by the Axis to strike uh, Egypt uh, and the uh, Suez Canal, and to harass uh, the Royal Navy, uh, the dominant uh, power, uh, sea power uh, in the region. Uh, as a naval base, uh, it offered the most uh, significant uh, natural uh, harbor in the Eastern Mediterranean and I mean uh, Suda Bay. Uh, it is uh, well known uh, that uh, in the war operations, uh, even uh, small islands, uh, we saw uh, this uh, at the Pacific, uh, even uh, small islands uh, can be uh, crucial. Uh, they provide uh, landing uh, fields uh, for aeroplanes uh, and uh, harbors uh, for, uh, for shipping. Uh, also, uh, the, so the, the German uh, High Command uh, debated whether to seize uh, the, the island or focus uh, efforts uh, on the planned uh, invasion of the uh, Soviet Union, Operation Barbarossa. Uh, capturing Crete, uh, would have uh, its advantages. Uh, it would be both give the, the Germans a good base uh, in the Eastern Mediterranean uh, and of course uh, prevent uh, the British from using uh, the, the island uh, to mount operations uh, in the Balkans, uh, Black Sea, even uh, in the Middle East. Uh, Manny, uh, because I still have the phone on to be able to communicate with you, can you not try to uh, move your phone too much because it, it creates some background here? I will do that. Uh, I guess, Manny, if, you know, you touched upon the, the heart-wrenching sacrifices uh, of the Cretan people regarding uh, the initial phase of the uh, operation. You mentioned there was 200 people that were executed within the the first couple of days, I believe you, you mentioned. What, what was ultimately the after effect uh, after the, the Germans uh, achieved their, their victory over, 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 the over Crete? Uh, they won the battle, but they certainly you know, didn't win the war in, in this regard. So, but there was a huge resistance uh, on the island, you know, mostly perpetrated you know, in many ways by the resistant fighters of the Cretans, uh, the Cretans themselves. Can you speak to that a little bit and some of the sacrifices that they uh, endured uh, during the, the ultimate uh, resistance and continuing occupation of the Germans? Well, first of all, the, the, the sacrifice that the Cretan people endured during the occupation is unimaginable to us. There is a report written by Nikos Kazantzakis on behalf of the Greek government that's called the atrocities of the Germans on Crete, that identifies not only the human cost, but also the economic cost. And the human cost was unbelievable. There are certain areas that, that they had no male populations left. Hmm. In one of the villages that Kazantzakis went up in the mountains, they stopped and they went to the, the, the right the center of the village and only a few ladies uh, approached them and they said, uh, we want to talk to your, your men. They said, we have no men. They're all dead. And then one of the ladies showed a little boy and says, but look at this little boy. We have, that's the yeast. And that will bring men back to the village. In other words, we depend on those few boys of the village to grow up again and man the village. The economic cost was tremendous. People did not have a chance or could not, because of fear, plant their fields. And therefore, they could not, they had no bread. They had little oil, they could not harvest. And the, the hunger that fell over Crete over those four years of occupation was incredible. Many people 
will die from hunger, in addition to the to the executions that suffered. And 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 I would urge people to look at that report by Kazantzakis. I'm not sure if, if it exists in in English. If it, anybody translate it, and it is horrendous, horrendous report. And I and I don't underestimate the the suffering of the rest of Greece by no means. But Crete was especially hit hard because of the resistance, because of the resistance, the initial battle and the continued resistance. And the reprisals by the Germans were swift and severe. In any, every case that something would happen, they would re issue reprisals by a factor of 10 or more. With, with the Germans there, and sorry for the ignorance of the question, were they Wehrmacht uh, uh, military or Gestapo, SS? Uh, what were they there? Uh, Nico, let me give you an example. Uh, I guess I guess uh, the Germans were probably SS, the officers and so on, but there were a lot of young German of, uh, soldiers that they were just following orders but they were beyond following orders. They were they were committing atrocities, and in particular, one of the villages in Chania, Kondomari, uh, a bunch of Germans showed up, and they found mainly women and children and old people in the village, about thirty or forty of them. The men were either up in the mountains or they were dead. They rounded everyone, and they 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 asked them to stay in the, in the, in the uh, town square and then they they had they were young soldiers from the pictures that we have that they took themselves later and and, and they they had no idea what to do with the people they were afraid of them and all of a sudden they decided that they were dangerous and they drove them to a field and executed all of them some 35 40 people Women and children, and and old men, and they took pictures to record their bravery, and those pictures were found much later in the German archives. Uh, I can't figure out these kind of atrocities are incredible. My um, um, Colonel Nick, uh, uh, I would like to to add something something about the the resistance uh, in Crete. Uh, after the, the evacuation, uh, if uh, you allow me. Please. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, the resistance of uh, people of Crete, I, I agree, totally agree with uh, Mr. Velibasaki, uh, continued for uh, four years uh, until the island uh, was uh, free uh, again. Uh, hundreds of uh, Commonwealth uh, troops uh, left uh, stranded after the evacuation, uh, were sheltered, and the care uh, for uh, by the Cretan uh, people and uh, at high risk uh, to themselves. Uh, this uh, resistance was also uh, uh, included uh, sabotage and attacks on uh, Nazi troops uh, forced uh, the Germans, uh, and this is important, uh, to garrison uh, the island for uh, four years with much larger forces than initially anticipated, uh, which uh, in turn uh, reduced the German forces available to Russian front uh, in the Middle East and uh, Africa. Uh, the Allies uh, sent uh, to Crete uh, several uh, special operation executive uh, officers uh, during this uh, period uh, who helped uh, coordinate the resistance and gather mm -hmm. intelligence. Um, one of the greatest coups of this resistance uh, occurred uh, on April uh, 23rd, mm -hmm. uh, 1944, uh, when uh, a team of uh, Cretan resistance uh, fighter, fighters uh, and some uh, SOE uh, cut, uh, kidnapped uh, the, the Nazi uh, general uh, Heinrich Kreipe uh, and the uh, spirit him uh, across the mountains, uh, then uh, off the island to Egypt. Uh, during uh, of the four years, uh, approximately four years of uh, occupation, 
the people of Crete uh, demonstrated uh, uh, their uh, unparalleled uh, spirit uh, of independence and braveness, uh, and uh, they continued uh, to support the Allied troops. Um, the Cretan uh, people uh, sacrificed uh, greatly uh, and were going uh, to suffer much more uh, from the brutal uh, uh, reprisals of the Nazis. Well, well thank you for that. Uh, let, me, let, let me move on here, if I may, uh, on more of the strategic component uh, of what was happening. The late Professor uh, Andre Yerlimatos of Simon Fraser University in Vancouver, British Columbia wrote, the Battle of Crete was both a strategic blunder on the part of the British and a tragedy for the island's population. We have certainly heard about the island's population. Can you speak, Colonel, regarding General Bernard Freiburg? Uh, as we know, the British had broken the German code but were very careful in terms of how they made aware that they were, they known about the code because they didn't want to know, they didn't want the Germans to know that they knew that they had broken the code. So if they had broken the code and they knew ultimately that was going to be an airborne attack, why was it that Freiburg was prepared for a naval attack? And why is it that Freiburg uh, did not allow for uh, the, the local Cretan population to be armed with weapons uh, and, and to, you know, to, to, uh, to fight with uh, the, uh, the British forces uh, on the island. It just seems there were some technical blunders made by, Fry, Fry, by Freiburg. And can you speak to that, uh, if you can, as to your opinion, as to his actions, as opposed to the actions uh, of, of his German counterpart, student? Yes, yes. Um, first of all, I, I would like to, to, to mention uh, why uh, uh, the Battle of Crete uh, is uh, uh, significant, uh, and there are uh, many reasons. Uh, it was a significant first because uh, it was the first time that uh, German uh, paratroopers were massively uh, uh, used. Uh, um, it was uh, actually the first mainly uh, airborne invasion uh, in the military history. Uh, uh, second, uh, it was uh, the first time that uh, the Allies uh, made a significant uh, use, as uh, you told us uh, before, uh, of uh, intelligence uh, from uh, decrypted uh, German messages uh, from the Enigma machine. Uh, the British has uh, one significant advantage. They are, were fully aware of uh, German plans for uh, an invasion of Crete. Uh, they didn't know uh, only uh, the date, the exact date. Uh, all the, uh, the other plan, uh, it was uh, well known to the British. Uh, this information was uh, derived from uh, the cipher um, German uh, codes uh, dubbed uh, ultra intelligence by the British. Although General uh, Freiberg uh, had advanced notice of the petting uh, attack, uh, he also ordered not to take any measure uh, that would uh, compromise the greatest uh, secret of the war. <laughs> the fact that the British uh, had broken uh, the German code. Uh, this uh, explains. Uh, All good is it if you break the German code, you know, and you know that the information and you don't use it properly. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, he, he, he was uh, convinced that uh, uh, there will be um, uh, not uh, a, a, an air uh, attack uh, and uh, air offensive. Um, an airborne assault. Uh, he believed that uh, uh, there was uh, a, a naval uh, uh, operation, an amphibious uh, operation. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, uh, he has uh, uh, ordered uh, not to uh, uh, reveal uh, the real plans of, uh, of them. Keep it on, keep it on Freiburg for a second. 
it's also been uh, noted by military experts and others that his other action uh, of not destroying the airfield uh, in proximity to Hanya uh, was another major strategic blunder because it allowed for the Germans to ultimately be able to land and to replenish their supply lines and to bring in fresh soldiers. Uh, what does Greek military history say as to you know that action? Do they attribute that as a major blunder regarding uh, the ultimate uh, loss of victory in uh, in, in Crete? It, it, it is true, Nick. But uh, I told you before that uh, 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 the British uh, uh, believe that uh, it, it was possible to defend uh, uh, effectively the, the island without destroying uh, all this uh, uh, crucial and critical uh, installation uh, for the future uh, operations. Well, but unfortunately, that didn't prove to be uh, the way things turned out, unfortunately. Yes. Not for them and certainly not for the, uh, the population uh, of Crete. One, uh, there was a qu just a quick uh, question from somebody who wrote, what, what role did the Italians play? Did the Italians play any role in the invasion? Uh, no. None uh, whatsoever? No. Okay, okay. Um, uh, Nicola, I, I, if we have time, I would like to make it so on a Greek American who took part in the resistance. Uh, and uh, he passed at 100 years old uh, last year, I believe. He was from Long Island. His family, he was a 17 year old kid that happened to find himself with his family vacationing in Greece. Uh, the Greek front. <laughs> question that was uh, that was sent in by someone that uh, I've not heard of this and uh, I'm just curious uh, what do you know about this that supposedly there was supposed to be a a civil guard that was supposed to be formed in Crete uh, consistent of civilians uh, apparently blue clap uh, blue caps and uh, armbands were shipped to Athens but for whatever reason it, it never materialized are you familiar with this is this uh, a true story, or for whatever reason, why it, it didn't take place. This would have been obviously prior to the invasion, and well before probably the Germans even, you know, came to Greece. I would assume. I, uh, I'm not familiar to to this, but uh, I would like to to add uh, something uh, in our discussion about uh, the the Greek uh, uh, groups and uh, units that uh, they participate in the in the battle. Uh, first, uh, um, I would like also to mention about the the importance, uh, the significance, significance uh, of the uh, Battle of Crete that uh, uh, due to the number of casualties uh, 
uh, another reason uh, due to the number of casualties uh, and uh, the belief that the airborne uh, forces uh, no longer uh, had uh, the advantage of uh, surprise. Uh, you know that uh, Adolf uh, Hitler uh, became uh, reluctant uh, to uh, authorize uh, further large airborne uh, operations. Well, they never, they never again. Uh, yes, yes. Preferring uh, instead uh, to deploy paratroopers as ground uh, uh, troops. Uh, in contrast, and this is important, the Allies uh, were uh, impressed uh, by the potential uh, of the uh, of uh, paratroopers and uh, started to form uh, airborne assault and uh, airfield uh, defense regiment. Uh, so it is important uh, as a battle. Uh, and uh, if I may, uh, I would like to um, to bring uh, to our uh, uh, discussion. Uh, something uh, else, uh, another uh, historic, uh, uh, heroic uh, story. Uh, it's about the Hellenic uh, Military Academy. Uh, you know that um, uh, among the, the units uh, which uh, defended uh, the island, uh, I would like to, to point out that uh, uh, the 300 uh, first class uh, cadets uh, of the Hellenic uh, Military uh, Academy uh, that uh, participated in uh, the battle. Uh, the cadets uh, of the first uh, class entered uh, the military academy on October uh, 2nd, uh, 1940, uh, when the Italians uh, invaded uh, Greece uh, on October 28, 1940. Uh, all the 2nd uh, and 3rd uh, uh, class uh, cadets uh, were named uh, officers um, and uh, were placed uh, in the active uh, unit. After the German uh, invasion uh, in uh, April 1941, uh, the Supreme uh, Military Command of Athens uh, issued an order uh, for the use of the uh, first class uh, cadets to enforce uh, missions in the region of uh, Athens. However, uh, the cadets uh, refused to carry out uh, this, uh, uh, this order. Uh, and uh, despite uh, the instructions of uh, their superiors, they uh, unanimously uh, decided to go to Crete to continue uh, the fight against the uh, enemies. Uh, it was uh, a brave but also a dangerous uh, and uh, challenging uh, decision uh, that uh, could be uh, prove uh, fatal uh, for their own uh, lives. Uh, on the morning of uh, 20, uh, uh, May 20th, uh, the unit uh, was attacked uh, by the German 2nd uh, Assault uh, Battalion, uh, being uh, supported uh, by the uh, German Air Force, which had been uh, bombarding uh, the cadets' uh, position. Uh, German uh, uh, German forces uh, exerted uh, intense pressure uh, to them on them. Um, in the afternoon, uh, the, their commander decided to pull back uh, to the Yana village uh, since uh, they were faced um, a shortage of uh, munition uh, and uh, the risk of being uh, captured or killed uh, by the Germans. Uh, moving uh, initially west uh, and then uh, east, uh, the unit uh, tried to, to reach uh, Hanya to reinforce uh, the city's uh, defense. Uh, on May uh, 28, uh, uh, it is uh, received uh, an order uh, by the Hellenic uh, Army headquarters to move uh, to Hanya. Uh, however, um, the great uh, distance, uh, as well uh, as the, the fact uh, that uh, a massive uh, British force uh, was already there and was about to sail to Egypt, uh, made uh, the command uh, impossible to, to observe. So uh, the commander decided uh, that the force uh, should be disbanded. Uh, cadets uh, were uh, divided into small groups uh, and uh, scattered 
to surrounding uh, area. Uh, unfortunately, uh, many of them uh, were captured by Germans and other uh, continued the resistance against uh, Nazis uh, in Crete or uh, uh, in Egypt uh, and other uh, places. Uh, that is that is a great story uh, and and one of great honor uh, and tribute to uh, these uh, brave cadets. May their memories be eternal uh, in the true Hellenic spirit. We have passed past the hour. We're going to go on for a few more minutes because I have one last question I want to pose to both of you, uh, and then I'll make some concluding comments and we'll finish. Let me first read a quote by uh, attributed to Adolf Hitler uh, that he gave in the Reichstag. Uh, in a speech in 1941, and I quote, for the, state, for the sake of historical truth, I must verify that only the Greeks, of all the adversaries we confronted us, fought with bold courage and highest disregard of death. In a editorial in the New York Times in 1994 by an editorial writer by the name of Carl E. Meyer stated that Hitler believed that the several weeks it took Germany to subdue Greece was responsible for his losing the war against the Soviet Union. Others, uh, this is a question that's never been properly being able to answer as of yes or no. There's a lot of uh, evidence to show that that has been the case and others will try to prove otherwise. In your opinions, uh, General, uh, <laughs> I'll make you a general one day, uh, Colonel, <laughs> Colonel, uh, in your opinion and in the opinion of, of, of the Greek military, is that true? Yes. Uh, the, the Germans uh, conquer uh, Greece, but uh, it is a uh, uh, a solo victory, uh, and uh, it is uh, it was uh, a psycholog psychologically uh, psychologically yes. Uh, why? Uh, first, the Germans who fought uh, in Crete uh, were uh, engaged or were engaged uh, in its uh, planning were demoralized. They were instructed. Uh, by their superiors not to discuss the battle with other units in the future. Many historians, and uh, I confirm uh, your comment before, uh, other uh, historians uh, believe, believe uh, the Battle of Crete, uh, uh, along with uh, the earlier uh, campaign uh, in Greece and Yugoslavia, contribute uh, four to six week delay, uh, weeks delay uh, of the German invasion uh, of the Soviet Union. Uh, this delay was to prove uh, uh, fatal um, in not achieving the German uh, objectives before the winter uh, set in. Uh, this conclusion uh, is supported uh, by information uh, obtained by the captured uh, naval war diaries. Uh, as well uh, as the testimony of, of uh, German generals like uh, General uh, Paulus, uh, von Rustet, uh, and uh, Jodl. Second, uh, the, uh, the Battle of Crete uh, uh, altered the course of the future uh, battle plans uh, in the Eastern Mediterranean. Uh, Hitler uh, was uh, so stunned uh, by the losses uh, that uh, he chose not to use uh, the Hermann Goering uh, division uh, as a parachute uh, unit uh, again. Not having this uh, division available uh, as a parachute uh, weapon uh, would turn out uh, to be devastating uh, for Germany's war efforts in the Middle East. Uh, and uh, I would like to quote uh, uh, Fear. Uh, address to, to General Student after the, the Battle of uh, Crete. And uh, he said, uh, of course, uh, General, give me a minute to, to, to quote uh, 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 the German, uh, uh, sorry, 
uh, of course general address to uh, general students. You know that after Crete, we shall never uh, do another airborne operation. The parachute uh, arm is one that relies entirely on surprise. That surprise factor has now exhausted itself. The day of the paratroops is over. And uh, of course, I would like to uh, also uh, to add uh, a quote. Uh, Very quickly, that, because we have to quickly yes, wrap up. Yes, that uh, uh, Winston Churchill wrote about the Battle of Crete. Uh, the German losses of their highest class fighting men removed a formidable air and parachute weapon for the forces getting expended, they there may have easily given him Cyprus, Iraq, Syria, and perhaps even Persia. Churchill's uh, analysis is the most profound when considering what occurred in the Middle East a few weeks after uh, the uh, Crete uh, fall. Thank you, Colonel. Uh, Manny, very quickly, your opinion on my, my question. Thank you both. Uh, if I may now just wrap up with some concluding comments. First of all, I want to thank both of you for taking the time today and presenting uh, to our panel on the Battle of Crete and this very important commemoration in, in contemporary uh, modern world history and specifically as it relates to World War II. As we've learned here today from listening to both of you and for those of us who have uh, read the history of the period, it goes without saying, Although Greece may have fell and lost the battle, they never surrendered. They never surrendered and put up some of the most fierce resistance fighting of any of the European uh, countries at that time uh, during, during occupation. Uh, and there are many, many stories that go into the thousands of uh, thousands of, of, upon sabotage missions that were conducted by the Greeks against the Germans uh, and kept them exceptionally busy in terms of manpower. To that effect, 28 divisions were tied down in the Balkans in Yugoslavia and Greece. And there are historians, military historians who say, if those 28 divisions were not needed, mostly because of the Greek resistance, they may have, they may have been deployed, probably would have been deployed to uh, Normandy, uh, the beaches of Normandy on D-Day. And frankly, it, it could have made the difference uh, of that invasion. On the contrary, and here at the American Hellenic Institute, we're never gonna lose sight to make the comparison regarding the value of Greece and the contributions of Greece with that of our friend to the east of Greece and its actions regarding World War II. And obviously it stayed, uh, Turkey stayed neutral during World War II. And not only did they claim they stay neutral, they of course uh, declared war on Germany within the last three or four days before uh, Germany uh, fell in April of 1945, but in Albert Speer's book, Inside the Third Reich, he categorically states that Turkey was providing valuable chromium to the armaments uh, development in Germany. And Albert Speer, uh, Hitler's armament minister and architect, claims that if a, if a, for that particular supply of chromium and other armaments, the war was extended by 10 more months. Uh, and therefore, I claim that every battlefield death, every death in a concentration camp, you can put it on the doorstep uh, of our current NATO friend, Turkey. Uh, it's a story that needs to be told regarding what Greece's efforts were. I'd love to be able to see more uh, 
documentation in history books and scholarly journals and others in the West. And I love to see Hollywood make a movie and no fiction is needed in this. The reality is, is tremendous and will make for a great story. In closing, let me just uh, say, I wanna read a quote by a very famous American general. As I said earlier, we've done many volumes uh, on, on, on Greece in World War II. Uh, this is one uh, we consider the most important. It was a conference we did over 20 years ago of, 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 of scholarly, uh, a scholarly uh, uh, publication of papers presented at a two-day conference we did on Greece's pivotal role in World War II. The book, for those who are interested to learn more, is available uh, on, our, on our website. This, unfortunately, is out of print, but this is a defining volume regarding, you can see how thick it is, Greece, the first victory. It was the first victory, Ochi Day, and the, the defeat of the Italians was the first victory regarding World War II. And again, we attribute that to the Greeks. And George Blutas, uh, one of our members in, uh, in Houston, Texas, wrote this opus uh, the, uh, of giving exceptional detail to what Greece did in World War II. Let me just conclude with the following, ladies and gentlemen, and I thank everyone once again for joining us. This is a direct quote from a general, which I will name at the end of, of the quote. As the years pass, it becomes more and more necessary to recall and record for new generations just how the people of Greece, alone or with allies, gained and held for their country for a century and more the independence and democracy it possesses today. And how in one special moment in history, Greece at a heavy cost and sacrifice and with great courage and determination played a pivotal role in World War II in defying the forces of tyranny and Axis aggression that were arrayed against not only Greece, but the whole Western civilization. It is an inspiring story. This quote, ladies and gentlemen, is from General Andrew J. Goodpaster, deceased now, former Supreme Commander of NATO. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your participation today. Thank you for uh, joining us from all over the world from different places that you've joined. We thank you. We thank the panelists again for helping us commemorate this very important historical uh, battle of Crete. And we look forward to having you again next week where we're gonna change it up a little bit. I know there's a lot of sports fans out there. So uh, we have uh, many Greek Americans who are in the sports world uh, at the American Atlantic Institute and other friends. So we're gonna have a panel on the current sport, the current state of sports in America. We wanna see baseball, many of us, we don't know what the NFL is gonna be like in the fall, but we're gonna have some experts next week and it will be moderated by Larry Michael, a Greek American, who, uh, who is the play-by-play -play man for the Washington Redskins. So until next week, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again uh, for your uh, participation today, for uh, logging in. Thank you for, to our panelists and uh, have a safe, uh, be safe wherever you are in this COVID era. We thank you. And once again, uh, may Geno's memory be eternal. Thank you for joining us. Good night. Thank you.